KCAA Loma Linda, 10.50 AM, 106.5 FM, and now 102.3 FM. This segment is sponsored by realtor Tammy Sutherland of Ukaipa and Realty World Premier, where she makes it her business to put happy people in happy homes. Here's what people are saying day after day. Tammy did way more than we ever expected in a real estate agent. Without Tammy, we would still be renting. I didn't think we'd ever find a house uh, we love, but with Tammy's help, we did. Now I get to mow the lawn every weekend. <laughs> but then again, that's why we had kids. Brandon! She made so much extra effort to sell our house and make sure that we understood every step of the way. Tammy always had our best interests at heart. I would highly recommend her. So, if you want your perfect house, you can find Tammy Sutherland at Realty World Premier. Whether you're looking to buy or sell, it's homesbytammy.net or on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Realtor Tammy Sutherland. You can also reach her by phone at 909-556-2094. That's 909-556-2094. Do you owe more than $10,000 in back taxes to the IRS? Can't afford to pay? You're not alone. The slow economy has backed many Americans into a financial corner. Here's fantastic news. The Internal Revenue Service is now accepting reduced settlements from taxpayers in trouble. A government program is in place to relieve overburdened taxpayers. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative, and if you qualify, you can end all collections, settle your tax issue, and possibly reduce the amount you owe by thousands of dollars. A new taxpayer emergency helpline has been set up by Tax Mediation Services. Call the helpline now at 877-207-2077. See if you qualify to have all collections ended and to have have your tax problems resolved for thousands less. If you owe more than $10,000 in back taxes to the IRS that you cannot afford to pay, call now to see if you qualify for the Fresh Start Initiative. 877-207-2077. 877-207-2077. Classic cars and low riders are descending on the KCAA parking lot for a Halloween fun fest for all ages. It's the Trunk and Treat Sunday night, October 29th. (laughs) Trunks of candy for the kids, food trucks, vendors, a DJ spinning your favorite dance tunes, community dancers, and a live radio broadcast. KCAA 1050 AM, 102.3 FM, and 106.5 FM invites all of the Inland Empire to join in the fun. Sunday night, October 29th in the Tri-City Center, 1378 Industrial Park Avenue in Redlands. Promotional fund and consideration to benefit nonprofit KQLH 92.5 LPFM. Bringing you the music of America's Main Street. Come on out, you'll have a scary good time. <laughs> Hey Ryan, do we have any beer in the fridge? Nah, I thought you got some. Oh, the game starts in five minutes. And you drank the last beer at midnight on Friday. I wish there was a place that delivered beer. Yes, I'm Captain Crafted. I'm here to bring you beer. That's Captain C-R-A-F-T apostrophe D. Why? Because there's no E, just a D, as in deliver, because Captain Crafted delivers. That's right. The Crafted Beer Store in Redlands is now open for business with great prices and deliveries of your favorite beer, wine, spirits, water, ice, and mixers. Did I mention their great prices? That's C-R-A-F-T. D B E E R store.com or Fred Crafted Beer Store on Facebook.com. Make it easy. Google Redlands Beer Delivery. Look for Crafted Beer. Crafted Beer Store in Redlands is now open for beersness. And I'm here to deliver. This is Dick from Carpet Masters. Carpet Masters has been serving the Inland Empire for over 55 years. Carpet Masters uses extraction cleaning for your carpet because there's no better cleaning to remove the soil from your carpet. All of our furniture cleaning is done by hand in your home or in our plant. Carpet Masters also offers dry cleaning for fine furniture. Call Carpet Masters at 793-7215. That's 793-7215 for Carpet Masters. The other stations claim to be local. Yeah, right. KCA Radio, the only true local radio station on your radio dial.
All right, everyone, welcome to the 90 Degree Show. I'm your host, Joe Beard, and happy to be of service for you. We appreciate all those listening live through iTunes, Facebook, Twitter, on the website, even on the radio. We are on 1050 AM, I think 106.5, and I think 102.3, and really excited to be finally broadcasting on the radio on a great audience. So thanks and appreciate all the love and support. This broadcast, uh, this podcast is brought to you by Block Band Music and Publishing, SAY Marketing Prom- and Promotions, BlocksUsUp.com. We hope you enjoy the podcast. First, I want to give a shout out to all the people that helped us bring here to this platform. We really appreciate it, and we will not forget you once we blow up and everything. And let me get to my panelists. I am seeing on the website, and it was really, really exciting. I can actually see y'all. I don't know if y'all know it, but on the website, I checked it out, and we are all live here on television. But first, let me say hello to our standing panel of experts. We uh, first want to say hello, of course, and not any special order at all, to the one and only Christy Walker, a.k.a. Rosa Parks. How you doing this evening, Christy? <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing well. You're killing me with that Rosa Parks, man. <laughs> I know. I bet. I mean to make you nervous and everything. Uh, and also another great panelist, uh, one that has attracted all type of attention all over the country. Good stuff. Good stuff, I might add. Miss Bridget Bell, how you doing tonight on this podcast? Good evening. I'm doing wonderful. How's everyone doing? Doing good. Y'all look good. I'm looking. This is the first time I've seen y'all. Y'all look good. And of course, uh, uh, the last but not least, the one and only, and we got got to get a new word here. Uh, I was going to say magnanimous, but the one and only (laughs) Rashad Waters. How you doing tonight, sir? What's happening, sir? Of course, the uh, two, uh, 2016 word was magnanimous. For 2017, we got okay. illustrious. illustrious. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there we go. There we go. This is cool. I can see y'all reactions. This is going to be cool. Keep using that thesaurus, y'all. The uh, illustrious Rashad Waters, owner and founder of Black Band Music and Publishing. How you doing, sir? Fantastic, man. I'm very uh, proud of this uh, event here, the uh, inaugural show here, uh, live, the way that we're doing it. And this is this is awesome, man. Yeah, Glad man. Glad to be here. Yeah, man. I'm really uh, happy I can see y'all. And we got the little peacock in the background, too. And I think my mom <laughs> is watching. So what's up, moms? Uh, hey, mom. All the hey, family, mom. all the family, <laughs> all the band heads out there. Uh, you guys can also check this out on YouTube. And a couple other places, but it'll also come out on the regular marching po- uh, podcast channels on iTunes, on the blog, and everything like that. Um, so you guys make sure you sign into kcaaradio.com or the link that we've been putting out on Facebook. It's a little bitly joint, t t m p underscore nbc. So you guys can check that out uh, to uh, listen and 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 watch us live, y'all. We actually live and moving along. I got my shirt on and everything. So really excited to have you guys on the show. So we doing the old school format. You know, we had kind of changed things up a little bit. But now we'll be going back to old school where we'll talk about the most intriguing matchup. And we also have like a second matchup. And then we'll open it up at the end for people to call in because I'm definitely interested to hear about what people have to say uh, about this weekend. So the most intriguing battle that we talked about, or I'm saying that we picked was uh, the Boombox Classic for 2017, right. the great Jackson State University Sonic Boom of the South uh, versus Southern University, the Human Jukebox. And that's uh, I'm that's sorry, what you say? The saying? great, right? Yes, the, the great. great. <laughs> the great. We're going to get into that in a few. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. They didn't spell it right. But yeah, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. And. Uh, we have another great matchup. Two major, pro- well, actually four major programs tonight. North Carolina A and uh, T or NCAT. Christy, I say NCAT. Is that is that tight? No. It's okay. Not. Okay. I was. <laughs> I knew you were about to say that, so I say no. So yes, North Carolina A and T and Bethune Cookman University. They came to Greensboro because Christy said last week that they was they might be kind of scared and. Uh, 
Why are you instigating? You stay instigating stuff. Yeah, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm starting to get intoxicated to being up here, y'all. So yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm calm down. But yes, they actually came. We did not think they were gonna show up, but they came. So we're really excited to talk about that. You guys, at the end of the uh, po- uh, I'm gonna keep saying podcast. I'm gonna get used to that. At the end of the show, we'll let you know when you can call in. I'm sure you can call in whenever you want. That's eight 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 nine zero nine. 1050. That's 888 909 1050. So, really excited to bring you this podcast. So, just real quick, we're going to talk about the Boombox Classic and we're going to talk about North Carolina AT and Bethune Cookman. So, we're really, really excited about the show. Uh, you can email us at marchingpodcast at gmail.com, tweet us at marchingpodcast, or follow the blog, blog4.themarchingpodcast.com. We're going to take our first break to pay some of these bills and to let some folks know about some of the great businesses we got out there and folks uplifting us on this platform. And we'll be right back um, after the break. Your host, Joe Beard, and the 90 Degree Show will return in a moment. Hello, this is Dr. Joe L. Beard, Jackson State alumnus, 1966. I march in the Jackson State Marching Band, which is then called the best band in the land. And you are now listening to the 90 Degrees Show here on the Marching Podcast Network. And the Rexes, have you ever found yourselves in this situation? Showtime is quickly approaching. Your budget is quickly disappearing. Your music choices are narrowing. The equipment condition is wearing and your stress level is mounting. Stop what you're doing and contact Block Band Music and find out how we've got you. Check www.blockbandmusic.com. Providing music, equipment, gear, and accessories to show style, core style, and traditional bands worldwide. The source for fair and factual information on your favorite college bands, BlockUsUp.com. Well-written articles, in-depth band performance analysis, helpful resources for band directors, fun band-related topics, and exclusive interviews with some of today's brightest and most talented leaders of college marching bands. Visit us at BlockUsUp.com, the meeting place for band fans and band directors. Hello, this is Diamond Frazier. I'm a member of the Tennessee State University Marching Band. I'm a part of the clarinet section. And I also was a 2016 scholarship recipient from the Marching Podcast. And you are listening to the Marching Podcast Radio Network. And now, more of the 90 Degree Show with your host, Joe Beard. All right, everyone. We're back. Uh, thanks for those outstanding words from our b- unbelievable sponsors. All right, y'all. So let's get right into it because, um, you know, we're watching the clock and everything. Uh, we want to talk first about Boombox Classic, Jackson State uh, against uh, Southern University. And I guess like old school, we can go around and go what you thought. Uh, we, it was a zero quarter. I didn't see a fifth. Um, if it was, somebody let break me down, let me know. But, of course, we had the halftime show, which, um, you know, I kind of got into it with this dude on Facebook about. But we'll get to it. So, zero <laughs> quarter. Uh, Christy, I always start with you. Uh, what did you think about the zero quarter or just ov- the overall event in general? Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you some overall. So, and I actually took some notes for this. Oh! So, yeah, I know, I know. Um... <laughs> Well, this last year I attended the Boombox Classic for the first time, and it definitely is a bandhead's bucket list item. If you can get there, especially when they play it in Jackson um, versus when they play it in Baton Rouge, I would definitely recommend that you um, attend because it, it's an experience. And it's, it's a great HBCU classic that's not really a classic technically, but it's still fun. So... I know that there was a zero quarter. I didn't go this year, but I I watched some of the clips. And I know there was a zero quarter. And honestly, 
I think since Crankfest was a couple of weeks ago, I really didn't need to see the zero quarter. Um, <laughs> I mean, I heard some clips and yeah, okay, so the bands were going back and forth, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't really doing that much for me. But what I really got a kick out of was halftime. So, <laughs> you know, I have been following bands for over 30 years. And this matchup, particular matchup, was one of the most trash talking is <laughs> um, <laughs> matchups in halftime, and I am a thousand percent here for it. I'm here for the petty. <laughs> I love it. I love the trash talk, and um, the, both bands had a lot to say. So um, Jackson State came on there, and they had like a. <laughs> And I guess it was since it was at Jackson, it was their home stadium, they had access to this. But they actually played footage of bloopers from Southern's band. Yes. And they had to show up on the Jumbotron, which I thought was hilarious. Um, and, you know, I thought, well, I thought it was interesting at the beginning, the very beginning of Jackson State Show, when the announcer was like, you need to sweep upon your, you know, sweep off your own door um, with the NCAA rules and I was like wow like they're really going for the juggler like off the bat you know um, and so I knew that at the beginning of Jackson's show was going to be good um, and I like the new floating JMU I thought it was very um, J not JMU I'm sorry I got JMU on the brain because I used to work there um, the floating JSU I thought it was very Good. They had a new one, newer than the one they used to have, um, and you know all the trash talk that was going on throughout the, the whole thing. Uh, I, I thought that was. I mean, Jackson State show. It it was what I expected. It wasn't anything out of the ordinary outside of the trash talk. I thought the Jackson had a pretty good sound. Um, then Southern came on, <laughs> and it was it, it was funny because. So, of course, Joe knows being an alum. Um, the word D T H E E because D I'm, I'm that's part of your alma mater. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. We we always the I love my dear old okay. college home. Okay. So that's why they put the in front of everything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So before I got before I get to that, I do want to say that Southern Star um, they played like Wishing on a Star by Rose Royce, and I thought. You know that was really good, and they had the different stars and the star show. You know, it was it was it was fine. But when they started, <laughs> I think uh, one of the announcers came on. Southern's announcers came on and said something like, um, "Pretending that he was uh, um, a, a person that worked at the Red Roof Inn," and so he <laughs> he called and said, "Charlotte, uh, it, um, you know, this is the Charlotte Red Roof Inn. We've been robbed. We've been robbed." <laughs> And if everybody remembers from earlier this season at the um, Queen City Battle of the Bands, apparently Jackson State's band members, some of their band members got caught stealing. Allegedly. Different, alleged. Okay, yeah. yeah allegedly stealing yeah. out of the Red Roof Inn. So um, they had the announcer say, you know, we're, uh, you know, uh, I'm calling in to the reporter, Robert. We've been robbed, and uh, Jackson um, Southern <laughs> formed D, <laughs> D on the field, and they had two guys, three guys out in front with bathrobes on and pillows to illustrate <laughs> the stuff that was thrown out the hotel. At this point, they take the V, T-H-E-E, -E, and then <laughs> add at the end F, so it reads V, V, <laughs> you know, T-H-I-E-F, I guess that's they were trying to say but they were using Jackson State D. Um, and I thought that was freaking hilarious. That took me back to <laughs> the 80s. Because, I mean, I got old footage of Jackson and Southern in the 80s going at it. And I'm 1,000% here for it. I love the pettiness. Some people may not like it. It's hilarious to me. I think it's part of the vibe. Um, and so I got a kick out of that halftime show. Both of those halftime shows were we're entertaining. Now, were they the most, were they the best, like, um, I don't know, like, musically or, no. you know, were the drills the absolute best? 
maybe, maybe not. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let y'all debate about that. But as far as being entertained, I was I was thoroughly entertained. <laughs> yeah, it, it tripped me out when I saw it when they started the breakdown and they had the hashtag the. I felt in my stomach that something was bad was about to happen. <laughs> like I knew it was something. That I was like, oh no, I don't even want to see this. Uh, Bridget. Ooh, I can't wait. Bridget, what do you think about the good old swack, swack infested boombox classic? Here we well, go. You all already know that my opinion usually <laughs> is a little is a little bit different. So <laughs> I, I watched it. Let's talk about Zero Quarter. So because you know how I feel about crank fest, that's not a musical word. Um, I'm glad we called it Zero Quarter, which it, it was kind of like Crank Fest. I kind of agree with you on that, on that, Christy. Didn't really need to see it, but apparently there was a rain delay. Right. The game was delayed because of rain, so it was a little bit of a longer, of a back and forth battle. Mm, when everything's loud, I don't see how people are calling winners. Oh, they was getting them. You know, I, I was reading some of the posts. Jackson State was getting Southern. Mm, it was just, I, I wasn't feeling the Zero Quarter. Okay, so let's move, let's move to the halftime show. Below the belt. I'm gonna say. It. I'm gonna say it. It's below the belt. Um, I feel like I feel like Michelle Obama on this one. When they go low, we go high. It's not even about that at this point, really. My thing is, as band directors, we have to have a standard. Um, and, and if you think about it, collegiate bands are the professional bands. Um, in our world, there's really no higher level besides military bands marching band and i'm okay with a little bit of haha rivalry but the thief situation someone lost their job about the alleged stealing incident and some other things so mm, southern i lost a, a a great measure of respect for you behind that antic i i didn't find it funny my my jaw dropped i was like oh my goodness they didn't go there that's not that's not cool. I feel I feel like some things are not funny. Just like when Talladega did the whole Al Qaeda thing or whatever it was, mm, not funny. We have to know where humor stops and where our professionalism kind of comes in. And I'm okay with the entertaining show, but come on, Southern that was below the best. The bloopers was kind of a haha. That's more of a band thing, but an incident at that level, that magnitude, that's an embarrassment. One to HBCU bands. Mm, no, I, I didn't find it funny. Southern, everybody dolts on Southern. I'm not a huge Southern fan. I feel like every time I watch them, I see the same show. I'm going to see the circle drill. I'm going to see the star. I'm going to see some box. I'm going to see <laughs> the little whatever, little men dancing. Whatever. I'm, I'm over it. Southern is the same thing. They're the only band that consistently gets away with doing the same thing. And everybody's okay with it because they're loud and they do the Southern thing. So the show didn't yeah. impress me. The new Jackson State floating JSU. Okay, cool. They did their standard run on. Show was okay. And it's so funny. I've seen that blooper reel a million times. Uh, one of my sores, shout out to Marcy, always posts that near this time. She always posts this. I was like, well, they must have just grabbed that from her page because I've seen that <laughs> bloopers reel before. But even still, why can't we just entertain the crowd? Why is it a battle um, to kind of bring each other down for the show? So, mm, no, I wasn't, I, wasn't really, I wasn't really feeling it. My thing is when kids kind of haggle each other, Facebook or whatever, that's one thing. But when directors get involved in it, I, I lose a, a great measure of respect for them. Yeah, Bridget, you know, of course, I ain't going to lie. So you always break it down and you make me feel bad because I'm like, dang, she'd be right. <laughs> and, and then it'd be like, all right, I might need to grow up a little bit. But but no, yeah, everything you said about Southern, I agree with. Now, yeah. the video thing. That was that was the first time I actually saw that where they said, "Hey y'all, look at the jumbotron," and the band, I guess the band was chilling while that happened, and it looked like something from somebody's page. You know what I'm it, saying? And like, it was. I've seen that clip a million times, Joe, on other people's page. Usually Jackson State people, like I said, one of my sorrows have it posted. That's the first time I've ever seen it. Was when she posted that. That's not even new. Maybe last year. So they included it in their show, and it was like, oh okay, ha ha. But even still, with that, it's just like. Mm, yeah, sorry to make it, but you have to realize I come from, a, I'm a band director. You know, I worked at HBCU 12 years with a band, so I come from a band director stance. I'm, I'm not used to that level of antics, so, yes, swack, I wasn't okay. If I was the president of a university, I'd have been calling somebody's band director in my office on Monday morning. Wow. You know, and the Sunday night, Sunday, I'd have been calling you Sunday. No, you need to come in here, forget church, come and talk to me. I'd have been calling somebody in. 
yeah it tripped to me out. right on in my office yeah it tripped me out and um it also tripped me out because i because it made me feel like did you know that southern was gonna do that or like did you know jackson state because it was definitely like christy uh said it was on the same level so part of me was like did they know they were about to do that so then that's why they created the show like that uh rashad uh what you think about the show man or what do you think about the event overall? The overall event, I loved it, man. Uh, I'm just so, so pleased that we live in an environment where people, that many people, thousands of people will come to an event. Uh, well, I guess probably about two hours before the football game begins in order to see the matchup. I mean, if you're watching the video, you can see there's literally thousands of people on either side of both bands. And that's that's amazing to me, you know, because there's all we've had the discussion before about the validity of the bands versus the football team and what is everybody here to see. And I think it, it just it adds a lot to the um, to the point of how important important the bands are by the fact that people come hour not just a 30 minutes not 15 minutes not 20 minutes they come two hours before the game begins to watch these bands battle um and also it's a testament to me um to the, to the endurance of both of these bands because again they played roughly about an hour and a half before the games are played and this is almost without delay at all one band played the next band played one band played the next band played there wasn't there wasn't any let's think about what we're going to play i mean they were just going back and forth i didn't see anything during the game but i'm sure they played all throughout the game they played the entire halftime and then they stayed there was a fifth quarter and they stayed another 15 minutes after there and um when it comes to endurance i actually started sitting down and i did something that i've never done before i actually started sitting down with my piano while I was listening to the video and just trying to figure out what are what are they actually playing, and baritones are on B flats and even sometimes on C's, but the mellophones for both sections where um, I have to give props what props are due there, they are really going way above the tessitura. Let me just give our non musical people just something real quick here. Uh, the tessitura basically means this is the note, this is the range that you as a um, um, as a solid player should be able to play, okay? And for the mellophone, that top note is co is concert F, okay? Um, Jackson State's, I mean, uh, Southern's mellophones are going to G. That means you're playing an F, then an F sharp, and then a G. So that's two notes above where, you know, you, a good mellophone player should be able to play. But the thing about it is they were hanging out there. They rarely went below that. They were always up there. Um, Jackson State's mellophones were on... Uh, regularly on a high A, which means everybody that's F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. That's four notes above the uh, the regular testator. And they almost never got below like an A below that. I mean, it was just amazing for that endurance. I'm not going to say it was the most accurate thing in the world, but hey. good God, they were they were <laughs> really trying. But, um, but uh, Rashad, that's the but that's the whole thing. It has to be it, it has to be it can be the range can be up there, but it has to be done well also. Right. What I'm what my point is the fact that uh, you know I've played in a lot of different types of ensembles. I did a little drum and bugle core, you know, core style band, high school show style band in college. I did pep band with A and T and North Carolina Central. Um, I've done a lot, and to be able to constantly play like that all the time. I honestly don't think there's any ensembles that can do that. And I'm including drum and bugle chords. When it comes to just sitting on the top of your range for three, well, like four hours and still being able to hit the note, that ain't even possible. Not not to play it well, not for four hours straight, but I have to give them props for, for doing a halfway decent job on, on the attempts there. Um, as far as the, the matchup between the bands versus during the zero quarter, it's pretty evenly matched. There was one point where uh, Southern dropped the ball when they played uh, Ooh, 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 Baby, Baby, and Jackson kind of hammered it in with a uh, piece of my love. That was great. But other than yeah, that, that. Uh, it was a really good matchup. Joe, they really went digging in the crates for some of those songs, man. Uh, did you hear the, uh, Southern play uh, Blood on the Dance Floor? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. He wasn't a '97 <laughs> was so version because we were just talking about yeah. that song and how yeah, you know how awesome it was. Uh, it's amazing though, and I'm gonna try to get br uh, uh, keep this brief here. It's amazing though for both bands. You saw opportunities, well not opportunities. You saw times of, as they were digging through the crates that there were songs that they should not be playing anymore. 
um, for Blood in the Dance Floor is probably probably one of those songs. That song was written for the band of like 1997. 20 years later, that arrangement no longer fits the instrumentation yeah. of the band that they have. So when I listened to Blood on the Dance Floor, which in 1997 was awesome. Scary. Well, that's like the first time we really heard the baritones go up to high B flats. But now it's like they do that all the time. So it wasn't awesome. We heard Jackson State play um, uh, Under Pressure by Boys to Men. And that arrangement no longer fits Jackson State's band. The instrumentation is just way different than it was back in the 90s. Um, but, but I love watching the event. Um, as far as the halftime show was concerned, I thought that both shows were kind of not their best, honestly. Uh, even during Jackson State's show, like at the beginning, I found myself looking away at my phone for a second to see what was going on. I really didn't, didn't think the announcing was helping very much. I kind of felt like... Um, I was at a Disney show. It's like, oh, you know, make sure you keep your hands and arms inside the, uh, the <laughs> roller coaster at all times. And here we go. Thank you for riding with us. I mean, the announcement was just kind of dull to me. It really didn't hype it up. The, uh, the show itself, the first half of Jackson State show itself really didn't do it for me. Plus, they pointed out a lot of things with Southern. They made those exact same mistakes that they were showing on the blooper reel right then and there at that show. Mm -hmm. You can watch the drum majors spinning their maces. They're not together. When they started doing the Tiger Run On, people aren't marching together. There was a whole squad of trumpets at the bottom of the field that was messing up. I mean, it was like a squad of freshmen. Like, they were constantly messing up. So for them to call out Southern, you got to be tight. Got to be However... Tight. Oh, also, Bridget, I want to say I thought about you when uh, Southern did their star because uh, that whole, here's the star of the show. Come on, y'all. We got to retire that. Like, yeah. for real, like, we've seen that so many times. I'll give them props for getting the drill a different way than I've seen it before. I kind of like how the trombone squad was kind of doing the maneuver where they were crunching in. That was cool. But, and they didn't just, you know, collapse and then do the circle drill like we normally see. So that was cool. But, um, other than that, the show Southern show was okay. When they got to the V and then the Thief, I thought that was pretty. That was pretty entertaining. I don't know. I'm used to all the junk talking, and you know, it's not something that is only with uh, our type of band. Because if you look at Ohio State and and, and Michigan, my God, I have not talking about how evil. <laughs> <laughs> that Michigan's band is. I mean, it's it's terrible. They may not take it to the level of calling them a, a thief, but I mean, Christy and I both being in um you know in rival bands. I mean, our announcers, particularly John Hodge, has talked a lot of crap <laughs> during his <laughs> duration. That was kind of low on so on on Jackson's part, but I didn't you know I didn't take it as anything really bad. Again, going back to Jackson as I close here. Um, I thought Jackson's show like team. I mean, their dance girl song a whole lot better. It was a lot more energetic. But when they said, "Ladies and gentlemen, please look at the jumbotron and see Southern University's resume," and then they played the blooper reel with the drum major, <laughs> not, and the dude falling while running, and then they took they made for those who didn't see it. Uh, Southern, uh, sorry, Jackson made Juke on the field for Human Jukebox. And then after we look, stopped looking at the Jumbotron and looked at the field, they made Joke. <laughs> and said, Southern's band is a joke. And then started playing a Southern song and said, get that out of here. I was done. I was done. I loved it. It was best shows, but from a rivalry perspective, I, it was great. Uh, fifth quarter was also cool. Props to Southern for stepping outside of the box a little bit and playing the... Um, a song from Rocky, uh, going the distance. It was cool. It was, it was different. So, good job, both bands. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was. Yeah, I felt I was. the same way uh, y'all did about halftime. Well, this, or I'm sorry, at the zero quarter. Uh, just like Christy said, we just saw Crankfest, so I wasn't necessarily tripping off the zero quarter. I watched it and everything. But as far as someone that marched in the '90s at Jackson State University. Uh, just let me say, we played marches, and we played, like, entire songs. So uh, it looks like Jackson State has changed their instrumentation, and now they're starting to sound like Southern, which is kind of depressing to me a little bit. Um, a lot of that musicality that we had, and we would just outplay them. 
So when we would roll in, we was like, wow, they loud. But then, of course, we would play a march and they couldn't play anything back. You know, they try to start dictating the, the battle or the play calling with some, you know, something that's like block block cores, like uh, Bridges says. But what I what I really don't care for is that we're losing that march. We're losing losing those marches. We're losing that color. And when I was watching them going back and forth, it was like, man, they sound the same. I'm not really sure what they playing because it was just ah, ah. Exactly. and so you know, everybody everybody wants to crank now. So you're losing musicality. That's my whole point. That was my whole rant on the last show. We're losing musicality because everybody wants to do that quote. I hate that word crank. That yeah. does not suggest anything musical. So you are losing the color. So now you have all brass bands who are just playing loud and drummers backing them up. You don't have any woodwinds. You have nothing. Chords bass line, loud trumpets. And I hear everything you're saying, Rashad, about arranging, but part of that is the arranger's fault. They're arranging instrumentation out of the characteristic tone of the instrument. Yeah. Tubas that play super high bug me. Tubas not designed for that. That's what you have baritones for, for that range and trombones. So when the tubas mm-hmm. are in this, you have the whole band playing high, you've lost your bottom. Tuba players play low. That's what we do. I'm a tuba player. Tuba players play low well. Yes, you can take it up on the staff, some and play whatever, but if you want to play the high play trombone, a baritone so we're losing the arranging style bugs me so now we're getting all the bands to sound exactly the same right but that's you know, that's been my rant for the last year so you guys know how i feel about how i feel about that but we're losing you know we're, we keep expecting musicality out of something out of a word called crank you're not going to get it yeah. so if you want crank don't expect musicality expect loud and disgusting and it's you okay if... southern southern thank you i, 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 I was just about to know, say that just, you, you cannot out southern southern you gotta let southern be them do what they do and the way that you beat southern yeah. is you do what you do but you do it well thank you and 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 strategize and, and with your song selection or you know the songs the timing of the songs when you play them what you play that's how you out southern southern thank trying you. to go toe for, toe for on, on the cranking that's not gonna work yeah, Absolutely. let me comment on all of that. Um, first of all, Joe, you're right. Um, now Jackson State sounds just like Southern. You, if you are uh, not looking at the video, you really can't tell which band exactly. is playing. Really, the only way you can tell the difference, um, again, the shout out Jackson State's, their mellophones are ridiculous. I mean, they're up there. And, mel- and um, when I was going back with the piano, I didn't hear Southern get as high as that. So there's a difference there. But to su- put the Jackson State's detriment, the mellophone section of 20 strong, their trumpet section cannot match that no. trumpet, uh, that mellophone section at all, particularly up there. A regular mellophone section, you need at least 40 trumpets. A, trump- a mellophone section is up that high, you probably need about 60. And so their trumpets are getting destroyed versus with Southern, they've got enough trumpets to be able to balance the 16 mellophones or 17 that Southern has. Yeah. Uh, uh, however... I would disagree with you, Christy, that you can't out Southern Southern because I think that Jackson State has now gotten to a point where they are competing with Southern on that level. And there were a lot of times during the zero quarter, I was like, wow. Um, it was that song I was just telling you about. Uh, it was a, one of the staple songs that they play right after in the beginning of the zero quarter, right after. To Southern and Jackson traded some slow songs, and Southern uh, Jackson came out with something. Woo! It was so strong and full, and th- to me, they out Southern Southern. So I, I think that's it's possible. Um, as far as the marches are concerned, I think we're kind of beating the dead horse there because now we have so many people that are coming out in order to see these the the events. You really don't have a time and a place to be able to put Rolling Thunder and oh, other okay. things like that. However. Yeah. I think what you have to do is you kind of have to shift your focus. You know, marches are, are great. But you know what? The marches were written in what? The 1930s, 1940s, 1950s. I think you can still do some uh, different songs and musical songs without limiting yourself to the marches. Um, I'll, I'll call out Hampton. You know, we've always played, you know, uh, Olympic fanfare. I mean, that's showing some technicality. There was a time in the 90s where A&T used to play what they call non-returnables. Where, um, you know, they would purposely learn songs like Night on Bald Mountain and Throne from Star Wars to try to show some diversity in their in the musicality. Great battle was between North Carolina A&T and, and North, I'm sorry, yeah, North Carolina A&T and North State in 2000. Because there was a lot of diversity in the music that they were playing. So I don't know that you have to necessarily go back to marches per se, 
but you can start to get outside of the box as far as the R&B stuff. Well, well, yeah, you Last can maybe. Real quick. Well, hold on, man. Last well, thing real quick. Well, hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Joe. We you can. Got it, man. You got it. I mean, because because basically, you know, I, I guess bringing up the marches or like you said, maybe if they're old or people don't want to hear them, we can actually bring up. Or I mean, we could actually maybe get some of the directors to write some more challenging music, or maybe you know mm-hmm. play something with some musicality, or maybe playing something out of the box, maybe maybe something that someone hadn't heard before. I think I remember we played in '98 or '99. I think we did somewhere over the rainbow, and you know people like that because it was different. I remember when we passed when they passed it out. I was like, what? I don't want to play this, you know. But it actually turned out good mm-hmm. for us. But yeah, I, I guess my thing is. When you came from Jackson State, we were all about the precision, and we were definitely all about tuning and all that, and we let Southern sound like they do. It seems like they definitely have gotten popular because Talladega sounds like them, and Miles isn't really Southern-like, but they kind of close to it. You know, it's just that horn, baritone line, and, you know, I'm – it's all right when Southern does it, I guess. I like it, but I also like when maybe, let's say, Tennessee State shows up and they actually are doing their thing and they're able to uh, have some type of color in their sound. You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah. that's what I mean. So it's really cool, and I'm really uh, appreciative to that. You know what I mean? Um, no, I think every, every band should have a brand. You should have what you do, and you should do it well. Everybody shouldn't be trying to do Southern. That's Southern a good point. Southern. Every band should have their own brand and they should look exactly, they should have their own trademark. Just like if I'm, if I'm running a good business, I have to have a brand. Every br- band should have their brand. We saw that work well for a band like Norfolk at the Queen City Battle of the Bands. Norfolk came out and did Norfolk. They didn't try to do anything else. They were themselves. And so we have to, the band has to be themselves and we have to accept it. M- marching bands that don't play marches, mm, I just want you to think about that. That's what I'm saying. That's, 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 what we that's, do. What that's what we do. And we have to train our crowds. What do our crowds know about music? We're the musicians. We have to train our crowds to appreciate what we play. So just like they, you can go in the stands marching and playing best band in the land or get ready and your crowd get hyped, you can get them trained to the point, I believe it, that if you're battling and you decide or you, you're playing you're playing a march, they can appreciate the musicality of a march. That's what we should be doing. Yeah, we're entertaining them, yes, but we're also training, training our audience. So you got to think at it at a different level level we can't just say oh we don't want to do it we don't want to do it no that's why we have these young musicians that only can do is play loud whole notes before (laughs) read them play loud again Mm -hmm. because we're not training them to be musicians i'm over it i'm over the whole notes taking a big breath after that we're not teaching phrasing we're not teaching articulation we're not teaching anything and yes you got to go back to the basics sometimes in order to get that all right, so already I'm, I'm looking I'm and I see the time with, uh, already. Oh, uh, Rashad, hold on, man. I already see oh. the time already getting okay. away from me again. <laughs> I, I already see the time getting away from me again. Um, but right quick, the only thing I had wanted to say about the halftime show that I had really wanted to plug in there, uh, one of the Southern players dropped a horn. So, of course, what? Oh, yes, yeah, well, they that. dropped a oh, horn. I saw that. So that was that was. That was awesomely bad it was <laughs> so so we actually i wanted to tell y'all what happened so of course it was a it was on the uncut page and of course i started you know going back and forth with people on there and they was like oh y'all had to slow down stuff in slow motion the blah 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 uh one brother said it was because he they had cotton gloves so of course we just gave him the business uh, all night hashtags uh, cotton gloves it was basically saying that you know <laughs> that that cotton gloves can actually slip or you can actually drop your horn with the glove. So the brother was trying to say that, you know, because they had cotton gloves on it, it could happen. So shout out to the brother. I, we had we had a good laugh laughing at you last night. But Southern is <laughs> never going to say, the Southern is never going to say that they took an L. You know what I'm saying? Uh, real quick, I'm already looking. We got to get into the other matchup. But uh, somebody was on the line. So I want to take one more break to uh, – play the promotion and we're still working out the format here uh with the 90 degree show so we'll be right back after this break y'all your host joe beard and the 90 degree show will return in a moment this is natalie kennedy beard spelman college alumni class of 1971 you're listening to the 90 degree show on the Marching Podcast Network. 
Hello, everyone. This is Joe Beard from the Marching Podcast. Is your school, club, or organization looking for a high-quality decorated apparel to outfit your students, staff, club, or team? Tired of the same old boring white t-shirt? Are you in charge of the upcoming fundraiser or special event but don't really have time to troll the internet for ideas or compare products? SAY can help with design and product selection. We can even assist with ideas on conducting an effective fundraising program. SAY can help you save time and get your message heard. So call 1-800-975-3156. That's 1-800-975-3156. SAY Marketing and Promotions. Give your brand a voice. The Marching Podcast Network is a network of podcasts with a purpose to inspire, educate, and show positive images in our community. Our network produces podcasts about college marching bands, business, health, finances, college preparation, spirituality, instrumentation development, along with one-on-one interviews with strong role models in our community. Looking for a podcast network that educates and inspires to make our world a better place? Then listen to us. Check out our website at themarchingpodcast.com. Tweet us at Marching Podcast or follow our blog at blog4.themarchingpodcast.com. The Marching Podcast, changing the world through positive interaction. Hello, my name is Kellen J. Christian. I am the director of bands at Oak Haven High School in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm also the assistant director of Talladega College in Talladega, Alabama. I'm a native of Chicago, Illinois. I'm a 2007 graduate of the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Info, baby. Swag, stand up. And you are listening to the Marching Podcast Radio Network. And now, more of the 90 Degree Show with your host, Joe Beard. All right, y'all, we're back after the break and appreciate all the love from all the sponsors. Uh, So real quick, uh, we're going to try to get our our talk on about North Carolina A&T, the great North Carolina A&T, and uh, Bethune Cook, I'm sorry, the great Bethune Cookman. I didn't want to throw no shade up like that. So Bethune Cookman <laughs> showed up to Greensboro. Um, I wanted to know what you guys thought. We actually got a caller on the line, too. So I want to hear what you guys think about real quick, and then we'll let Reggie on the line. Um, but, uh, Christy, what did you think uh, about uh, the overall event? Well, I thought it was pretty run-of-the-mill, like – well, first of all, I got to say that I didn't even know that Bethune Cookman was coming until later. I thought they weren't going to come. And I know that um, both of the football teams were, were doing well. So, I mean, it makes total sense for them to, to come. But I, I didn't realize they were coming all this way. So, to me, it was pretty run-of-the-mill. It wasn't as, you know, action-packed, I would say, as the boombox. There isn't that deep sense of rivalry there. But there were just a couple things that I that I noticed. I know that um, Bethune Cookman. I've I've said this before, and I'm I'm going to say it again. There, Bethune is so predictable. And what what's sad about the whole thing is that like the band heads know it. Like we can pretty much call out their show from top to bottom. If we were to just you know close our eyes, we could recite a Bethune Cookman show, and that's pretty much what we got. Um, but I mean, they they sound they sounded well. Um, but Thu Kuma's announcer, I don't know what was going on with this man, but he <laughs> was not. Oh yeah, he was doing the absolute most. Um, my my gripe with Thu Kuma is they're kind of boring in that they do the same thing all the time. The only band they really get up for is when they face FAMU. Anybody else is mm-hmm. just meh to them. Um, and so I felt like their show, it just felt like the energy was low. The, the energy felt low to me. Um, and I felt like it was kind of like going through the motions. I thought 14K was good. Now, I'm not a, a dance analyst or anything like that. You know, I'm just trying to give you some general effect here. But I thought 14K was good. The only thing that was different to me that Bethune Cookman didn't do is they actually didn't play a slow song, and that that part surprised me a little bit. But 
maybe it was a time crunch or you know whatever. So I. I, I would hate to say that Bethune's show was mad, but there wasn't anything that I can call out and say that, oh, man, they just really did it for me. Um, and then moving on to a and show, well, before I go to a and I I do want to reemphasize that Bethune, they did, they did sound good. They sounded balanced. You know, they're not like a swag band at all. There's no crankage. Oh. They sound good. <laughs> right. But overall, <laughs> they, um, <laughs> I don't know. They're just, I hate that they're doing the same thing that I feel like they've been doing for almost 20 years. <sighs> Other than off of what FAMU does. When FAMU started doing the animated drills, but then started doing the animated drills. But I just, no. But anyway, I could go on on that. We we, we got time crunch. A T <laughs> show I thought was was good. I you know A T has has done theme shows around their past few years. Um, I didn't know this one had a particular theme. I do notice that they played mostly um, New Jack Swing kind of songs, so things from like the late eighties, early nineties, which you know I love, but I don't know if the if the crowd of like current students really went for it um there was one thing that auntie did that kind of distracted me and i want to say is when they featured cold cold steel and it's not because they necessarily feature cold steel but it was like cold steel was featured and then golden delight was dancing at the same time it reminded me of grambling it was too too much going on at the same time. It was just, it was just too much. Um, you know, if you're gonna have the dance girls dance, that's fine. If you're gonna feature a cold steel, that's fine. You can even do that in the same song. I don't have an issue with that. But don't do that all at the same time. It was just, it was just too busy. The show was too, too busy for me. The dance routines were okay. You know, for both schools, I wasn't really impressed. Dance routines don't really do it for me, honestly. No, not anymore. But no. Yeah, not anymore. Not anymore. Back in the day, yes, but not really anymore. So, I mean, I feel like it was, you know, A&T sounded well. I, I thought they sounded well. Bethune sounded well. It was pretty much run of the mill to me. All right, Bridget. So, like, we got, I think, I know we under 10 minutes. So, yeah. yeah. You know, and I'm going to say, um, Joe, if you want to go to the caller, that's perfectly fine. I think Christy probably has the best overview, at least from my side. I saw a little bit of it. Bethune Cookman is very predictable always. You know that. <laughs> They have a great sound, but they're also very forgettable. They're, you, I never remember what they do um, besides <laughs> sound good. You know, they, they're a very forgettable band. So I really don't have much on this. So if you want to take callers, I'd love to hear what the audience has to say on it personally. All right. So Rashad, real, real quick, because uh, Herbert on the line. Y'all know Herbert. Everybody know Herbert. Oh. Everybody know Herbert. We got Herbert on the line to call in. Rashad, you say something real quick in a couple of minutes. Oh. I can't help but but be quick because I, I didn't see that. I spent so much time preparing for the Boombox Classic. The only thing I can say about that is I heard Bethune made three mistakes in the stands, and that is a phenomenal thing because Bethune never makes mistakes. They never, ever make mistakes. So if they made three mistakes, somebody lost their scholarships. You best believe <laughs> Yeah. Caller. Those jokers, they were going through the motions. Those jokers were going through the motions. They they were just here so they wouldn't be fine. Just like um <laughs> just like Marshawn Lynch. I'm just here so I don't get fine. All right. right. <laughs> uh caller, Herb. What's up, man? What you doing, man? How you doing tonight? I'm doing okay, man. First of all, uh congratulations, you guys. Um listeners to the podcast is dope all the way through. Uh, you know, I mean, I've been on the podcast at some, you know, in the past, you know, when y'all when y'all still small time, now that y'all big time, you know, <laughs> and with the NBC <laughs> logo in the back, <laughs> y'all good. Um, but I just wanted to say, like, overall, you know, in terms of, I know Bridget was kind of touching on this uh, earlier in terms of what we see and expect out of bands um, when it comes to, you know, our audiences. And, um you know, boombox, and I, and I say this as a, as a as an objective guy. You know, swaghead. The boombox has this draw because there's a culture surrounding it, mm-hmm. meaning that, you know, the folks that attend the boombox, the bandheads that attend the boombox, the high school kids that feed into those schools from both areas, 
there's a culture surrounding those programs. And I think that has a lot to do with how, you know, the programs are seen, you know, the cranking is seen, you know, if you're not necessarily privy to it. And, you know, I think a lot of us are to a, to a limited extent, but to a lot of those folks that are from those regions, from Mississippi, from Louisiana, you know, from Texas even, from Memphis, uh, those folks live for that stuff. And, you know, that's kind of where you see, you know, that's, you know, that's why you see the emphasis that you see. It's not necessarily, you know, um, everybody kind of, you know, riding Southern or trying to duplicate Southern style. Although that, you know, I think in, in a lot of ways for the SWAC that has been become the MO, but there's a cultural aspect to that too. And that has to do a lot with not just Southern University as a program and Jackson as a program, but it has to do with the cultures that, you know, that kind of feed into it, like Mardi Gras, you know, the bands that do the Mardi Gras parade, all that. So, you know, um, but outside of that, you know, Ante, I saw that game, I saw the halftime show. Ante was, 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 you know, pretty much within their envelope. Bethune was Bethune, pretty unremarkable. They sound great. They do absolutely nothing else but sound great. So, um, uh, but outside of that, man, I just wanted to really tell you guys congratulations. You know, uh, you know all of us in the Bad Hand community are really rooting for this to really take off. Thank you. Guys yeah, for having thank me. you. You with us, Herb. You with us, Herb, too, man. Uh, a lot of y'all that's calling in. We kind of know everybody that'll probably call in. Or, or all the band has that's listening. Um, so yeah, we we all in the same boat. We all we got. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> yeah. wherever we go, we we taking y'all with us. You know what I'm saying? So real quick, we probably got time for one more caller, uh, and I think this Foster. Uh, uh, caller, uh, since, since I don't necessarily know you right now, please, please, no cursing. My mom is listening. But yes, please go ahead. <laughs> Hi, my name is Darren Foster. I graduated from North Carolina a and I'm friends with Christy Walker, and we've traveled to Banhead events over the past at least uh, three to four years um, as of now. And um, I just wanted to make a couple of comments about the topic from this evening. Um, I very much agree with a lot of what Bridget had to say and Christy had to say, and even some of what Rashad had to say. Um, oh, in reference to the Boombox Classic, it's definitely a, um, a pilgrimage worth every bandhead should make. Uh, I went to it twice, not back-to-back, -back, but I went last year with Christy. She came with us, and I had gone maybe, like, I think two or three years prior to that. Um, it's definitely something worth checking out. It is very ignorant. <laughs> um, I think that in in a good way, in a good way. Right, right, right. The ignorance. Um, yes, after, we love it. But yeah, the, the, the ignorance. But after a while, the the the, the crank it. Especially we experienced this a little bit when we were in um, Queen City for the Battle of the Bands this year. I get after a while, I get tired of bands yelling at me. So you know, after a while, it just sounds like a bunch of hollering. I don't know if yeah. any of y'all are from the church or whatever, and you know how gospel singers can get up and they start out singing, but then they after a while, hollering. they'll come over them, mm -hmm. they just start hollering. Yeah, that's what it's like, and it's just too much after a while. Um, real quick, I didn't watch all of the footage from the A&T uh, Bethune Cookman show, but I kind of agree with everybody was saying that it's pretty much run of the mill. There's really not much of a, a, a band rival there between A&T and um, Bethune Cookman. I already know what Bethune Cookman sounded like because once you've seen them a few times, you've been seen them a thousand times. And so I'm pretty sure they were just Bethune being Bethune. And, you know, ANC was running the mill. I thought they sounded, I think they sound really good this year. The show was just okay. It wasn't anything special. Um, yeah, but I like where they're going this year, and I think that they sound real good. Well, thank you, man. I uh, appreciate your call. Shout out to you. I always love anyone to call from ANT. You know what I'm saying? My grandfather went to ANT. Um, I don't, I don't ever, no. I don't pub that enough. Um, but we are actually like in the last probably thirty min, thirty seconds of the show. Um, so uh, I appreciate the three of you guys. We are on the West Coast, but you guys are up late over there. So we always appreciate much love and respect to the three of you guys, and uh, we really appreciate it. Um, if you are interested in becoming a sponsor or a patron to the Marching po po Podcast, please contact the show. We'll give you the criteria so we can start to pub your business using our platform. Thanks a lot for listening, everyone. And 
I'm sure that we are going to sign off. Yes, yes, we definitely wave, and we'll get the format together uh, for more calls and more band talk. Thanks, y'all, for listening.